Well, how many of you out there would like to explode your small game populations? I'm going to tell you how to do that, and I can't wait to do so. Small game populations bring me back to my roots. And the cool thing is, the better the small game populations you have, and that diversity on your land, the better deer hunting you're going to have, and I'll explain that later. Small games bring me back to my roots. Grew up hunting uh, squirrels and uh, rabbits with pellet guns. That's, that's how I grew up. No one in my family hunted. So that was a gateway to get us into deer hunting. And now I love deer hunting, but I love exploding small game populations and a lot easier than you think. Look right up here. I'm gonna talk about the diversity you need on your land and the edge you need on your land. You know, we go into CRP, pheasant mixes, and it'll be four or five grasses, four or five, 10 forbs and forages. And, uh, and people call that diversity. They plant that entire area into, a, or that entire mix into a 40 acre field. Folks, that's not diversity, that's a monoculture. It's all mixed together. Diversity is having true solid blocks of various types of habitat that actually help different critters. When you combine all those together, big picture wise, that's diversity. It's a monoculture of switchgrass, but it's a good thing because switchgrass is the only grass up here in the Midwest that has a chance of actually standing up in the worst of snowfall. It's really critical to pheasant habitat. Why is there no pheasants? Because you don't have fence rows anymore. Everything's clean farming. You farm, the edges are all farmland now. There's no more edge, there's no more fence rows. You farm right up to the hardwoods, no more pheasants. It's a really simple tool. Someone asked me the other day on a, on a comment on YouTube, what can I plant in a food plot for birds and to attract pheasants, grouse, turkey, whatever it might be, nothing. They need cover. That's the, that's the lowest hole in the bucket. You plug that first, give them cover, so you can put whatever kind of food there is. We have a great uh, pollinator blend that we sell through Pure Wildlife Blends, but that alone is not going to give you a population of small game. You have to have the cover. Pheasant need long lines of escape routes. Pheasants that fly, die. So when they run, they can get away through pr from predators. They can run through all the switchgrass right here. It's a monoculture, but you need it. If I dilute this with any type of grass, it's gonna fall down during the winter time. No more small game, no more pheasant population. So this, we use switchgrass as more of a screening around this entire block right here of about 80 acres. It's all switchgrass. This is anywhere from 30 feet to 100 feet wide. And it's a solid patch because we want the critters that are in here protected from the ag land out here, protected from our access, protected from seeing each other. Very, very critical. You want a monoculture in this case because that's like the walls of the fort around this diverse habitat on the inside so you can actually have different types of small game populations, not just the pheasant, because we want more than just pheasant. Pheasant need this long escape route that they can run through and get away. Now, when the winter gets really tough, those pheasant want to have all this briar regeneration, gray dogwood, gray dogwood clusters, they get in there and they need to be protected from birds of prey above. But this also is great for rabbits. So we have our diversity pockets down there, big rock trees. We actually have four of them in this area. There's 13 shrubs surrounding four trees. And those grow up, we have that cluster, great for rabbits, great for escape cover, great for winter cover for pheasants. Pheasants need this long line, rabbits duck and dive and spin around and turn, they need smaller areas. But we're overlapping pheasant with that rabbit cover right here. Then we get into, when you start getting this regeneration, we have these pockets in here. I'm walking through a pocket of switchgrass. This is planted last year, we mowed it, we'll mow it again in May. We'll hit it with 2,4-D in June to get some of these broadleafs out. And this will be standing five, seven feet tall as we get into the end of summer, just this little pocket. And then it's surrounded by low growth, so it's not gonna get shaded out. We have a pocket of trees we left here, a pocket of briars, there's a pocket of gray dogwood over there. We have our diversity pockets. We're just filling in so that there's actual diversity in here because all those pockets of either shrubs, switchgrass, hardwood regen, then we're getting the best of each one of those properties and they all complement each other. And I forgot, right up here, along this switchgrass, we have some rows of Norway spruce. So we want that conifer cover, which is further cover for pheasants during the winter time, a skate cover for rabbits from above, actually adds a thermal protection layer in here. So it adds a lot to this entire area 
but you can see we're not we're not planting this whole field in conifer that would be a true monoculture and if we added conifers grasses shrubs grasses and forbs and forages in an area it, and it's spread out over a whole 20 acre area kind of like you put all those ingredients and threw them out there in the field then that again is just a monoculture because it's the same thing we want solid blocks of conifers shrubs grasses hardwood regeneration and that's what we're doing to fill this area as we move down into here you get areas like this so that that are on the edge of grassland and hardwood regeneration or hardwoods over here now you have the perfect turkey nesting habitat why is there a loss of population in turkeys in the country it's not because there's glyphosate it's not because of clean farming turkeys didn't live out in those farm fields with a bunch of weeds anyways and, and farm fields have been cleaned by good farmers for decades and decades the loss in population comes from there's no nesting habitat there's no escape habitat for polt we had polt last year and we'd come driving through in the side by side they dive into the switchgrass to get away they have escape cover but this is nesting habitat nesting habitat where you have the grassland upland meeting woods that area in between of hardwood regeneration, briars, perfect nesting habitat. We've walked within five feet of a hen and she jumps up and flushes. It's like a dinosaur taken off. They get down and burrow in these areas and they actually have good nesting habitat. Don't have nesting habitat, don't have escape cover. You're not gonna have a population of those small game species. Then we come down into here, you can see another line of switchgrass here. Again, we have areas for pheasants to escape in here. They burrow into these briar patches and gray dogwood during the winter time. And then here's one of our recently constructed rabbit huts. So we take a rabbit hut in this location. We put the three pallets back there. Why not just throw a bunch of brush there? Because rabbits need those different layers. A lot of times someone will say, oh, I have, I have brush piles for rabbits, but the rabbits are laying the brush piles right on the ground and there's no holes for the rabbits to get into. They need that structure underneath. The pallets provide that. We hinge cut over it. We cut trees in general. This creates hardwood regeneration along these briars, along the pockets of briars, gray dogwood, other shrubs we're planting, the conifer line, the switchgrass. Now we have overlapping cover because rabbits need this kind of structure. Those young need those different layers they can go up and down to escape predators. We have video of coyotes coming right up to that, those pallets right there, they can't get in. They can't get the rabbits out if they're hiding in there, especially those young. So the pheasant cover overlaps with the rabbit cover. And then the rabbit cover, because of this hardwood regeneration, overlaps with the turkey nesting and then finally grouse. So those in this area, and it might be quail if you're down south, but we have grouse, turkey nesting, pheasant, and rabbits on this property, a lot of them. It was funny, a friend of mine, he's a wildlife biologist, Colin, he was over the weekend and he was just joking around. But we were watching two grouse, grouses were driving by. We just slowed down, it was a male and a female. And we were just watching them and uh, they're only 10 feet away. They didn't want to leave the gray, gray dogwood. And because they'll, they'll get picked off from predators from above. And Colin made the joke kind of like, wow, I'm watching the only two grouse in Southeast Minnesota. The whole point is there's not a lot of them out there, but not a lot of pheasant. If you create the habitat, you get pheasants. If you create the habitat for grouse, you get grouse. If you create great turkey nesting and a room for an areas and habitat for poult to escape, then you actually get an explosion of turkey population on your property. You can control that. If you look at, well, I'm just gonna plant this pheasant mix or this CRP mix, and it all lays down during the fall and winter, you're not gonna get a population. True diversity comes from having solid blocks of habitat that each has its own piece and does what it's supposed to do. Solid block, block of switch does what it's supposed to do. This rabbitat going up here into these solid clusters of briars or gray dogwood, the shrubs we planted, the lines of conifer, they all do their part. We even have little areas of small pockets of trees and hardwood, hardwood regeneration. Each one of those together creates true diversity because they each have their strength alone. We get tons of small game and guess what? It all creates whitetail habitat because whitetails are creatures of edge. At any one time of the year, during seasonal times, they need these different habitat components. So put it all together, 
you not only have an explosion of growth for, growth for your small game species, but then you can have great whitetail habitat. And if you put a bullseye on the map and you put whitetail in the middle, it's gonna include all these species if you're doing a good job for whitetails. I think Dylan brought up the term at one point calling those, those uh, small game species indicator species, meaning that if you have those species on your property in an area where you can have them, then you automatically have good whitetail habitat. But if we just had rabbitat, if we just had pheasant cover, if we just had turkey nesting, that doesn't necessarily mean we have good whitetail habitat. Put them all together, creates edge, whitetails are creatures of edge, and now you have the best of all of those species, and that's why we have great wildlife. We're very passionate about this. Don't let anyone ever tell you that a monoculture of switch is bad. It's the one grass that can stay up during the winter time. It even has its limits too. If you get two feet of wet snow on this, it's not staying up, but then the critters can run into the hardwood regeneration, shrubs, and that's why you're putting all this together in one spot to equal true diversity. And when you get that, you got a lot of different wildlife that you can enjoy on your land like we do. We love going for drives, just seeing the pheasants, the grouse, the rabbits, the young turkey poult. We haven't seen any pheasant chicks. That's the one thing I'm looking forward to seeing that. We've seen hens dusting. We have hens out here. We've seen them even this winter. But um, that's the one thing we haven't seen. And don't be surprised when you do all this if you have a lot of predators too. But the more food for predators you you actually give them, especially in the form of small game. They're not really messing with your deer herd as much, and there's plenty of small game for them to go around. We actually took out four coyotes over the winter too, which was a good thing. And we're gonna work on our uh, raccoons next. But uh, bottom line is, lots of wildlife. You can do it too when you practice actual true diversity on your land.